All right, this all starts about a week ago where Miss Ali Beth Stuckey makes this tweet here, basically saying that Mr. Beast's sidekick, Chris Tyson, just also happens to be a lolicon, based on this tweet here from six years ago. Now, before we continue, we need to address what term lolly actually is referring to, considering that there are a lot of misconceptions in regard to this term and all on display in this particular tweet. Lolly is a term used simply as a classification of body type, namely a petite body type. It has nothing to do with age and simply to do with body type. It certainly could be used in a spicy context, as Miss Stucky here presents, but to say that it is solely a spicy term doesn't really fully bring justice to the term lolly. There are plenty of examples in anime where lollies are included in a non-spicy context, namely Toradora, the Chris Recoil, Clanad, Konosuba, just to name a few, and let me make this very clear. They are not included to spice up the show with fan service. They are there merely because they add to the moe, another term which just means cute, so they are just there to add a cuteness factor to a particular show, not there for spicy reasons. Yes, you are allowed to think that this concept of a lolly is weird or abhorrent, but the concept itself isn't inherently evil. The attraction in a spicy way to such a body type is certainly rooted in evil, but the existence of the body type itself isn't. Now that brings me to the problems with these two videos, in particular by Mr. Michael Knowles and the aforementioned Miss Ali Beth Stuckey. Both videos actually make pretty standard claims, nothing that we didn't already know about the Troons, that it is interesting that Troons also just happen to be attracted in a spicy way towards lollies, particularly prior to their transition. And do you know what? It shouldn't surprise anyone that Troons are attracted in a spicy way towards children because the whole identity of the Troons community is based around the perversion of gender. However, what I do have a problem with is some of the anti-anime rhetoric that was spouted during the premiere of Miss Stucky's podcast, and I should address the way in which this podcast episode was also named. I will say that both Mr. Knowles and Miss Stucky were very gracious in the way they handled the subject material. In Miss Stucky's podcast, it did make her position clear that not all anime is explicitly spicy, but I can tell you that this sort of stuff isn't perceived that way. This is why I'm talking about this now, it's because the relationship between conservatives and anime better well improve, or else people will be alienated from this side of the political aisle. Miss Stucky, in the last half of the podcast episode, seemed like she was insinuating that anime is a contributing factor for people to transition. And while I have made similar claims in the past with a particular anime, the difference here is that there are vast generalizations made by conservatives that anime as a medium is a problem in society. This was not even half a year ago where Mr. Matt Walsh made the claim, whether it was trolling or not, that anime is satanic. Similar claims were made in the premiere live chat of Miss Stucky's podcast episode. That anime is demonic, watching anime will send you to hell, anime is an addiction just as bad as any other drug. My point being is that when conservatives say stuff like this and present present themselves in a way which is anti-anime, it's not only an insult to right-wing anime fans like myself, which I'll discuss a bit later, it actively alienates the vast majority of people who are avid fans of anime and are also apolitical. Conservatives need to be a lot more tolerant towards the medium of anime because not only is it much better than a lot of western propaganda and trash that is being forced down our throats, a lot of anime does promote traditional values of justice, traditional views of masculinity and femininity, precisely because Japan has not been infected with a woke mind virus. When conservatives do say this sort of stuff, not only are you missing out on connecting with a new demographic of largely young people who are apolitical, you are actively alienating them by saying that the medium which they so love is a thing of evil. But what's worse is the insult it brings to right-wing anime enthusiasts such as myself. I pride myself in the identity I find in Christ. I also take pride in being part of a community full of right-wingers who also enjoy anime. I'll just cycle through a few of these tweets and shout out a few accounts on right-wing Annie Twitter for you to see for yourself that being right-wing and watching anime is a thing that can happen. Shout out to Saber, Urban Tree, Emil, Block, Gav, Greek Moogie, Ren, Mento, Grumpy, Wonk, Massey, Bredon, U2, Jugger Bear, Fuma, and of course I too have banger tweets that pop off like this one. I do hope that as we move forward that conservatives and Christians as a whole do become more tolerant of anime because it would be better if we were more united on this point. And if you do want a Christian anime recommendation from yours truly, the foremost authority on what determines a Christian anime, then have I got a video for you right here.